Gavin McInnes is suing the Southern Poverty Law Center. If you're not familiar, the SPLC is a nonprofit. They label people extremists or hate groups. And following that, they, they hold a ton of power. So I believe YouTube was, I don't know if they still are, use the S SPLC to find extremist content or, you know, they would label extremist content. There's an inherent problem with that in that the SPLC is an extremely, extremely far left partisan organization. Gavin, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll read some of the story and then a comment. There's, there's a lot to go through here. Um, I filed paperwork. We didn't get to the lawsuit stage against SPLC when they falsely accused me of being alt-right, apologized, then labeled me as an individual on the left, which I appreciate. We have the story from Cassandra Fairbanks of the Gateway Pundit, who I believe probably can just hit up Gavin, so I, I believe this story to be accurate. Right-wing comedian and political commentator Gavin McInnes announces defamation lawsuit against the SPLC. Comedian and political commentator Gavin McInnes announced on Monday that he has filed a defamation lawsuit against the Southern Poverty Law Center. In a statement provided to the Gateway Pundit, McInnes explains that they have been they, that, that they have harassed me, my family, and my friends to a level of tortious interference that goes well into sabotage. So, I'm not a lawyer. My general understanding is that tortious, uh, if I'm pronouncing right, interference would be something akin to if Gavin McInnes has an arrangement, a contract, the Southern Poverty Law Center then goes to a company and threatens them with something like, we'll do this to you, we'll label you this if you work with this person or do anything with this person, effectively trying to, like business deplatforming, I think isn't legal, but again, not a lawyer. So, you know, I'm sure there's a ton of lawyers or people who have legal expertise who will watch and comment and, and correct me if I'm wrong. But, you know, basically they're interfering with his business. They're sabotaging his business. Majid Nawaz, okay, he, he runs the Quilliam Institute which opposes extremism. But Majid is a Muslim. He's a reformist. They labeled him an extremist and he lost a substantial amount of money because of being on this list. He filed a suit against them. I, I believe he filed suit, but, that, but I think it may have just been a demand letter. They settled for something like 3.75 million, but uh, um, 3.375 million, I think it was. In a statement provided to the Gateway Pundit, McGinnis explained that they have hara Oh, yes, I just read that. The 70-page complaint was filed on Sunday evening in the Middle District of Alabama. The filing outlined defamation and other tortious acts resulting in reputational and economic damages to McGinnis. He is being represented by the highly respected First Amendment attorney, Ron D. Coleman of Mandelbaum Salzburg PC and Baron Coleman of the Baron Coleman Law Firm. So you can see here, um, I'll, I'll, I'll open this. I think this may just be a simple image, but let's take a look at what Ron Coleman posted on Twitter. So, so he does have a, uh, the full complaint, but let's go through his tweet. So he posted this, uh, G. Baron Coleman, law firm, Gavin McInnes, plaintiff versus Southern Poverty Law Center, and uh, plaintiff Gavin McInnes by and through the undersigned counsel and, as and for his complaint against defendant SPLC, alleges, uh, hereby alleges as follows. Let's, let's read the story because they'll probably summarize it better than reading through the entire thing. According to the press release, McGinnis is demanding an apology from the far-left organization for purposefully misrepresenting his beliefs in a defamatory manner and the defamatory mischaracterization of a fraternal club he founded, the Proud Boys. McGinnis, who has been deplatformed across social media thanks to activist reporters campaigning against him, said the lawsuit was not, was not just to protect him and his family, but everyone else as well. The SPLC has gone from a, uh, so this is his quote, the SPLC has gone from a no noble institution genuinely dedicated to eradicating hate to a hate group in and of itself that pretends this country is frothing with bigots desperate to foment World War III, McInnes said in his announcement. They purposefully lie about their enemies in an attempt to destroy them, their words. And it's become a very effective way to make money. Scaremongering brought them the $50 million their founder originally set out to make. Since then, it's garnered hundreds of millions, including untold millions in the Cayman Islands. I don't fault entrepreneurs, but they are using this incredible wealth to wield power over the innocent and destroy careers and businesses in their insatiable need to generate more bigots. Because in the world of SPLC fundraising, mo hate is mo money. The comedian explained that he and many others on the right are tired of being portrayed as racist, Islamophobic, sexist, homophobic, etc. He stated that it's not true. Now, the one of the big challenges here, because I've done a ton of videos about defamation, is that calling someone a bigot or a homophobe, it's, it's an opinion. So they, they, they might be able to overcome that burden in that there's a pattern of behavior. But again, I don't know. The SPLC is allowed to claim this, you know, to say what they want to say. And the other thing is, 
no one has to listen to the SPLC, right? Their power isn't derived from government or any kind of actual authority. They're just a powerful group that other people listen to. If someone is going to look, you know, if, if I put out a list claiming that Gavin was a, you know, a, a, a wheat farmer, that's a false statement of fact. You know, if, if he can prove damages, say it's not true, he, he lied about me. If I said, you know, I don't, I think Gavin McInnes is secretly planning on, uh, or, or no, 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 you got to avoid saying, so opinions about his character. If I said, I believe that he was a Buddhist, like that he secretly holds Buddhist views, that's more of an opinion. So at that point, if anyone chooses to listen to me, it's not, uh, it's, it's like, what are you going to do? You know, if YouTube just says, I believe Tim Pool, when Tim Pool's opinion of Gavin McInnes is that Gavin McInnes is, you know, secretly, you know, holds these views. Well, that's just an opinion. No one has to listen to me. So it's, I, I don't know how you could you, you get over that. But because the SPLC has a history and they have, they have settled for cases before, they may be able to actually, they may be actual, uh, actually able to win. And this is going to be, um, there's going to be a big, a, a big issue here for the SPLC in that, you know, when, when Majid Nawaz filed his, you sent him his, sent his demand letter and they gave in. I asked uh, some lawyers why that would be the case, and they said it's because Majid had a really good case against them. He is a Muslim. He is not an extremist, and they've called him an anti-Muslim extremist. Thus, you can kind of show that's that's an extreme view to have. Plus, they'd be going up against another organization, which could probably fundraise to an extreme degree. It was a big battle. And if Majid actually went to court, they could set precedent against the SPLC that would open the door for all of these other organizations to sue them. Now, I want to mention, because I brought this up in the beginning, full disclosure, I actually uh, had a lawyer send a demand letter to the SPLC on, on my behalf and others because they called me alt-right. And they uh, it was in passing. It was a really weird story. They, they now have an apology up where they identify me as an individual on the left, which I can appreciate. There was also other people involved. I think it was like Ben Norton and Rania Kalik and uh, a few other anti-interventionist leftists. The issue here, in my opinion, as to why they probably just apologized and backed off immediately, I, I wasn't demanding any money. I was just demanding, you know, take it down and apologize. Um, I believe that was the case. I could be wrong. It's been a while. Uh, I think it was my, my last year, my birthday, maybe. But one of the most important things for me in my case was that the Southern Poverty Law Center wrote, published an article where they claimed that I was alt-right and that I had, I had attended an Iranian conference, Holocaust deniers conference. That is a, a, a level of insanity. I have, I, like, how, what? What? Their evidence. The writer found an archive of a website that doesn't exist that claimed I was a speaker with, uh, I think, Medea Benjamin, who's the founder of Code Pink. Now, my understanding is that Medea Benjamin actually did speak at this event. I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I could be wrong, so I'm not going to make any assertions like they did. But I got to say, if the SPLC's evidence that I am an alt-right Holocaust denier is that someone found an Iranian website that had been deleted and they found an archive of it. I have never been to Iran, okay? <laughs> I'm not alt-right. Like, I'm going to have to say, like, you're going to have to... St okay, what, what ended up happening was I was talking to some lawyers and they said, basically, if the Southern Poverty Law Center wants to fight this, they are going to have to stand up in court and claim they believe Holocaust-denying websites from Iran that are uh, uh, archives of them are, are legitimate sources of information, that they believe that to be accurate. And that's going to be really, really bad for them, really, really bad for their credibility, because then in the future, that's their standard, right? That's like, it's, it's, it's ridiculously insane. So they, so they took it down. They took it down. Um, it's it, important for me to bring up, but let's, let's move on. Comedian explained, uh, that's not true. The vast majority of us are good people and getting us fired and deplatformed because we dare to support the president isn't just a corrupt and immoral way to make, to make money. It's not just immoral, it's un-American, McInnes uh, asserted. McInnes said that he has been uh, banned from platforms, including PayPal, which he was using to promote people, get uh, help, he was using to help people get decent legal representation. The deplatforming has also left him unable to defend himself against the lies being spread about him online. I do want to point out, this is very important, I think most people recognize Gavin, McIn Gavin, Gavin crossed the line too many times. Now you can, there, there's this uh, super cut made by the super deluxe guy, that is extremely out of context and unfair. In one instance, my understanding is there's a video of Gavin threatening violence, but it was actually about dogs. It was about something like if a dog bites you. I don't know what it was fully about, but even people on the right have said they, they understand Gavin is trying to make jokes a lot of the times,
but he crosses the line too far because if someone doesn't understand that it's meant to be in jest, he's literally saying to attack people. Like it is, it's it's a fact, you know. So it was. I think Nick Monroe put built a big thread breaking down all the misrepresentations in this video by that uh, Vic Berger, his name is. But he, but Nick actually pointed out Gavin went too far. He, he did, you know. So. You can't have all these videos where Gavin says, we're going to do X, we're going to do Y, and, and threaten these things, and then think nothing's going to happen. But I do think there, it is fair to point out the SPLC is extremely hyperpartisan, and I wouldn't trust their assessment. I mean, look, they had to retract an article and apologize to me for calling me alt-right because they saw it, an Iranian Holocaust denier's website with my name on it. If, 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 look, at this point, even though they did, they did take it down, that's their standard of evidence for their blogs. Now, now, I appreciate removing it shows that they don't trust these sources and they apologize. And they removed this, all of these guys' blogs. So that's fair. I, I, I'll give them that. You know, I'm not going to fault someone for doing the right thing and apologizing and taking things down. Although it wasn't a, a direct apology. It was a, we didn't mean to frame it that way. So... People aren't just being deplatformed and having their livelihoods stripped from them, McInnes explained. Their lists are also leading to violence. Leo Johnson was working security at the Family Research Council when he was shot by a man who saw them on the SPLC's hate group list. The Steve Scalise shootings were inspired by the SPLC, SPLC's list. A professor at Middlebury College was hospitalized after daring to defend Charles Murray, who was deemed verboten by the SPLC. When you see their hate map of America, you'd think you were living in Nazi Germany, McInnes added. McInnes said that he has had enough of the organization that is pretending to fight hate while manifesting it out of thin air. He said that their profitable lies and relentless thirst for fake villains shows no signs of abating. And until we stop and say no, they will continue to portray this country as a dark and disgusting clan rally populated with bigots determined to torture those who disagree. Coleman added that this lawsuit it has implications beyond Gavin McInnes because we're challenging the use of deplatforming and defunding to privately censor speech. If we can't stop this phenomenon now, the First Amendment will be rendered meaningless as dissent is silenced through private actors such as the SPLC and its allies. Those who wish to contribute. Uh, they, so, you know, look, I'm not a big fan of Gavin McInnes. Uh, I'm not. Uh, a lot of people, for some reason, think we've ever, we've worked together because I worked at Vice and he was one of the founders. Not true. He left in 2007. I came six years later. I think Gavin has repeatedly made jokes and comments that I completely disagree with and has led to, led him to this point. He's, the way I would describe it is, you know, he flew too close to the sun. Do I think that he is how they paint him? No, I don't think he's as bad as people claim him out, you know, uh, claim he is. I certainly wouldn't trust the SPLC's ass assessment of him, but I think he flew way too close to dangerous territory, like period. I don't want to, I'm not going to play that game where they, people claim like he's flirting with, you know, the alt or whatever. No, Gavin has straight up denounced them and all of these things, but the Proud Boys did grow out of control, in my opinion, like, and that, and that's not necessarily, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily my opinion, um, like that comes from statements where Gavin says it's just a group and people induct each other and he has no control over it. So you end up with people who in that New York video getting into fights with Antifa, I can understand why people would be mad, but after they beat up these Antifa guys, they, they're, you know, jumping up and down laughing and, 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 it's, and it's, it is growing out of control. But uh, to be fair, Antifa did beat and rob some other guy later on. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna act like you know the SPLC is uh, an accurate source by no means. They had to retract stuff about me, but I, I will say it is fair to point out what Gavin was saying in many of these videos that got him in trouble were obviously you know to to anyone who's trying to be fair not meant to be serious. But you can't expect people to know that, and that can lead to dangerous situations. And Gavin. In the words of other people, not just me, people on, even on the right have said, you know, his jokes were way too over the line. And I'm going to say, look, man, you can call him jokes all, all day and night, but when you go on your show and repeatedly make statements that are, are calls for violence or, or threatening violence and death, sure, sure, call it a joke. It's, it's nah, not going to fly. You can't do that, right? Plain and simple. So, so we'll see how this goes. I'm no fan of the Southern Poverty Law Center. I care very little for Gavin, not a fan of his, but... I do think the SPLC is very dangerous. I, I do. Uh, and it's unfortunate because I, I guess even, they, you know, Gavin acknowledges they had a good history. But this will be interesting. So, you know, the Proud Boys have been purged from everything. They've been getting in a lot of fights. The main difference as to why I think the Proud Boys uh, have faced more repercussions than Antifa is because it's hard to target Antifa. They're just a bunch of random people. But they do have uh, branded factions. Those branded factions have been removed from PayPal and other places too. So it is not completely asymmetrical, but there is an advantage to being a disparate group of random people. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But uh, 
you know, if there's any updates, I'll, I'll cover it. Stay tuned. I'll have a video, uh, another video on my main channel, youtube.com slash timcast at 4 p.m. I'll see you then.